You know, sometimes you've just got to stop and just look around and appreciate how this, how beautiful this game looks. Just beautiful. A brilliant job, especially at night time, just watching the planets in the sky, the stars, listening to the, the alien life in the background. It just... You know, you just know you're on a different planet. Beautiful game. Okay, so welcome. Welcome to Icarus. I like calling it Icarus, but it's called Icarus, so I'll leave that one with you. What is Icarus? It's a PvE survival game, which you can play up to eight players. But for the sake of these videos, we will be going solo. But who knows, maybe we'll get some surprise guest appearances later in the series. The name of the game is to explore, harvest, craft and hunt. And also to search for exotics. Exotic materials, items and completing missions. You are a prospector. They pay you good money to land on this planet and to survive, pretty much. And complete the missions and a progressive tree for more rewards with better loot and etc etc. This game was created by Dean Hall. Many people will probably know he, he came from Daisy. So he has a survival knowledge and this game is all about survival. Okay, so join me for this series. We are going to be covering a lot of topics and adventures. The first episode we'll be covering just basic stuff, getting started, get a feel of the game and what's in the game. And later episodes will be less self-explanatory and more action and fun missions. Okay, before we do anything or, and before I show you any of the footage that's going to happen, there is one thing you guys need to know about before you play your character. You need to have a good long think of what your character is going to be like, what you want to pursue. Do you want to be a survivor who does really well based on resource gathering or hunting or cooking and farming? Or do you just want to build a base, a really nice big massive base? Or are you a warrior and you like a certain type of weapon for bows, for hunting for example? You need to think long and hard. To, for which talents you're going to pick. So have a good think of what your character is going to be when you land on this planet because it's very, very vital you focus those points towards your playstyle. You will get the best, most results, very efficient out of these talent trees. Okay, so this is the standard intro for every mission. We're in a pod blasting from our space station to Icarus, Icarus, whatever. While we wait to land, let's name that game. Troopers, you are green. You are very, very mean. 10 points if you get the game right. Couldn't resist, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we'll be starting episode one with the mission called Livewire Terrain Scan. We'll be landing in a forest density area, pretty easy. These type of missions are designed for you to get used to the basic mechanics of how to play Icarus. So my train of thought is, I'm going to go to the river. As I get a feel for the game, as I start collecting resources, I can keep my hydration up every time my hydration meter goes down. And as I'm spamming... On my way down to the river, I'll be fortunate enough, I'll obviously pick up some fruit vegetables as I'm spamming F. And with, if I was unsuccessful in that, I'll be close enough to fish, to get some fish from the river. So, the river is a very good source of food and hydration, obviously, to get you started as you get a feel for the game. That was my thought process anyway. So if you have a look at your tech tree, you should have some blueprints already unlocked, like pickaxe and hatchet, that sort of stuff. Primitive 
weapons tools which are used for obviously harvesting resources or last ditch attempt as a weapon which requires stone sticks and fiber which you'll pick up stone sticks and fiber from spamming F as I said earlier I do apologize when I mean hatchet I mean stone axe and when I mean pickaxe I mean stone pickaxe these two blueprints should already be unlocked in your tech tree so you just need to go into your crafting tab and you should be able to make them with the resources you've harvested by spamming F. Once you've made those two tools, it's it's identical to Ark. If you've ever played Ark, you use the pickaxe to harvest stone and you use the, the stone axe to harvest wood on a tree. So pickaxe for boulders or any form of rock or metal boulders because you'll be harvesting a lot of different type of metal rock with pickaxes in the caves later on and stone axe for any form of wood to get an overabundance of those resources i'm also going to make a couple wood spears just to defend myself a stone knife to be able to skin animals and a primitive bow and arrow so these will be stone arrows it's all stone tier so that's the first tier you'll have available you'll be able to unlock higher tiers which are you know be better metals like uh, bone and then iron then uh, steel etc and onwards so you'll get the gist of it but that's a bit too far ahead we're just going to be getting some primitive equipment ready for this mission we're about to partake in. This is what I ta was talking about when it comes to food resources in the river. You can use your spear, attack with your spear, throw your spear, but I just find using the bow and arrow. Uh, don't forget to get your arrows back as well. So that, that's my dinner. We got a campfire on the go in a bit, but I think this is enough tutorials for now. Let's get started with the mission. Okay, so our first objective is to collect the radar from Supply Pod. Um, when we looked at our map, uh, our landing capsule is not far from the container, so let's go in, see what goodies we have. Okay, so this is the container. A radar. So this is the device we're going to be using to scan these three objectives. Fair bit of travelling. Well, before we decide to move on, I have a bad habit of being over-prepared compared to being under-prepared. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a temporary base which consists of thatch building walls and foundations and beams. So I'm just going to collect some resources and uh, once I have enough, I'll show you how to build a base. So every now and again, I always try my sculpting skills, see if I can make something out of this boulder. 10 points if you guess it, get it right. Yeah, I got a bit of work to do on that. Okay, we have all the ingredients we need. You need to place a thatch beam to support the foundation and the floors. So you just place one down. Excuse me. Oh. So we're going to be doing a 3x2. More of a 2x2, two two, but we're going to have a porch. Now, you're going to want to put more thatch beams to support this or this will break. You'll hear creaks and cracks on the, on the foundation. And it will break eventually the more weight you put on. So, yeah, just be careful of that. If in doubt, just put another beam under. Okay, now we need some thatch walls. You can do a few things with thatch walls. I'll explain as we go. So you can place some bollocks, wrong side. Press Y to destroy, you get the thatch wall back. You do not lose the ingredients. 
two different sides. And now if you hold down R, you can change certain uh, door frames or window or that sort of stuff really. So you don't need to unlock, unlock them separately, they just come with when you unlock the wall blueprints. So yeah, we've got some door prints, uh, some door frames, a couple doors on. Right, we need a couple more roofs. I made a couple more thatch beams as well to make it a lot more porchy. Nice little view in the lake, river, whichever. Okay, we're going to bring some light, put some windows into this. So we'll deploy the thatch wall, hold down R and go for the window frame. And we'll do the same again with this wall. Alright. It's looking nice. Cozy. We'll place the fireplace outside on the porch. Make it look a bit more advertising, more homely. Put the fish on because they're about to go off. We've only got sticks at the moment. The the fireplace can take four different types of fuel. Fibre, sticks, wood and coal. In that order, the weakest to strongest. So we we don't have access to coal yet. So the second best resource is wood. We'll be using wood eventually to make a better base. But for the moment, we'll just chop a tree down. Just be careful where the tree lands because, uh, yeah, it almost landed on my base and... That wouldn't last. It wouldn't look very good. Thatch defense is very, very weak. Very weak. And you'll see later on in the game how weak it is. Okay, we'll take the sticks back and we'll re replace them with wood. And as you can see, the fuel consumption time is a lot slower. And the wood turns into charcoal as well, which can be used for another few more ingredients later on. So yeah, uh, there's a uh, re recipe menu top left with all ingredients that can be cooked on the fire if you're unsure. But now that we've uh, sorted that out, we need to start looking for oxygen. Oh, is that a piranha? Yeah, be careful, there are killer fish. Piranhas. Want to jab with a spear. Oxide. This mineral, I believe it's a mineral, is you somehow put this in your spacesuit and it gives you oxygen. I know, I don't know the math behind it. All I know is the blue rock goes in the spacesuit. So that's all you need to know when you first start. But this mineral can be used in other contraptions to make it more efficient. Just keep that in mind. I would really encourage you to invest in the blueprints for oxides. You're just making it more efficient long, long term. But we don't have the blueprints for that yet, so we're just going to get the raw oxide and stick it in our suit. Oh! A weather event. Our first weather event. We've got showers. Minor showers approaching. Okay, so that should not be enough to destroy thatch. When it's anything other than minor, yeah, the thatch base is not going to last, so we should be okay. We'll stick close to the base, because you need to find shelter. But when, it, when it's only minor, it shouldn't be, we, we won't need to find shelter really. It should be, we should be okay, but eventually, ooh, another fish, 100 XP, thank you, and a real fish, oh, here's our di extra dinner, can we get this one, no, too quick, that's why I used to burn arrow for those ones when they're on the surface, anyway, so here's the rain, and my fire's gone out. I guess it doesn't register its 
got a ceiling, so... Hmm. Let's try that again. Yeah, it goes out. Okay, it's registered outside. I guess we'll have to make another fireplace. Oh, we can pick it up. Yeah, you can pick certain items up by pre holding down X. If you've placed them in the wrong spot, you can move them somewhere else. Once you, that's where you put the, the oxide. You can only take 50 pieces. And you will notice now my O2 symbol on the bottom left hand corner will start refilling. Yeah, we'll place the fireplace in the corner there. We've got a bit more. F oh! No, that wasn't destroyed. Alright, basically, when your base starts taking damage, you need to use a repair hammer to repair it. Surprisingly, it does not take ingredients, it just consumes a lot of stamina. So, always have a repair hammer on you, especially when you're around the base when there's a storm happening. So, yeah, I lost my train of thought now. Where were we? Storm's not that bad. This is what I mean, storm exposure. Once that meter at the top fills up, you'll start taking health damage. Right. We need a bedroll. This is one of the harder things to get. We need fur and leather. Right, bedrolls are your spawn. So if you die, you can respawn on the bed. Or you can sleep in the middle at night time to get a buff for the next day, which lasts about 500 seconds. So now that our base is sorted, the storm is about to pass a light rain, light shower. We need to start getting fur and leather, and to get fur and leather you need to hunt animals. Deer, wolves, bears, any land animal carries a certain amount of fur and leather. So what I'd recommend you do is take your bow and arrow and crouch to get the stealth multiplier hit like 2.5 times this will increase your damage so if you can uh, get a headshot while crouched without the animal being aware of you the chances are a critical hit will kill the animal and sometimes you'll get that awesome skyrim stealth kill with with the arrows. If you ever played Skyrim, you used to see the camera on the arrow flying straight to the person you shoot it at. Same thing. Now don't be disheartened. Get a few of the bow and arrow, the arrow drop and how far you can shoot. Stone arrows don't do a lot of damage. You need to get successive headshots to kill the animals. That's only if they are aware of you, like I said before, if you can get that stealth headshot, chances are you're going to get a stealth kill. So practice stealthing. There are talents in the talent tree which will help you with sneaking, so if for people who, like on Skyrim, who used to invest points in the stealth skill, same thing, pretty much. Hunting is a... it's probably one of my favourite pastimes in this game. The resources you'll be harvesting from the animals are very vital. Each item has very useful com components, especially my favourite out of all of them, bone. Bone can be used for upgrading your tools and weapons to tier 2, which will increase your damage, which will make things a lot easier in killing future animals friend or foe, you know. Wolves, try get the stealth kill. As you can see, Skyrim camera stealth kill. Stealth attack 2.5. That's how you get it done. That's how you get your first few kills and collecting the important fur and leather and also essential bone. Once you've killed the animals, use your skinning knife to skin them and the remainders will be bone once you pick all the items up. Use one of your tools, pickaxe, hatchet or knife. You can harvest the bones and you can use those bones for bone arrows, bone spear, bone knife. All these items are very, very essential and will give you a step up from the primitive stone 
material. Hunting animals is very good because not only the resources you will get from them, you will also gain a lot of experience by killing the animals and skinning them. It's a good, quick power trip to get you level up on those first early levels to unlock more blueprints and more talents to make you a uh, formidable foe a lot quicker. Once you've gained some meat and vegetables, put them in the fire to cook. The food buffs are quite important. I always try and recommend you to at least have one piece of meat and one piece of vegetable because of the buffs you will get. For example, meat will give you a little bit extra health, like a little small health potion to be precise, or it will give you a healing factor a lot quicker. And the same with the stamina, it will increase your stamina and also increase how quickly your stamina re regenerates, so eat your vegetables, kids. <laughs> You'll see at the bottom left hand corner, the buffs will appear on your screen, so you can keep track of how, how, how long you have before they run out. It's always essential, I always advise you to just keep it topped up. You never know where you're going to encounter a wolf. And those extra buffs will give you an extra advantage in battle. Especially vegetables. I do find, out of the two, stamina is very, very important. You won't be surprised if you got a couple debuffs and you're not doing very good. You've used your stamina in a fight or sprinting running away from a bear. You can get in trouble really quickly, so I always like a stamina buff, especially when I'm venturing out away from my base. Okay, after a long day hunting animals, I've accumulated enough leather and fur. It was the fur that took the longest to get, to be honest. Sometimes I was only getting a piece or two off animals. I was able to gra gather enough ingredients to make my sleeping bag. You have to unlock the sleeping bag from the tech tree and then craft it and then deploy. Always deploy it inside your base next to a fire because you can only sleep when yeah, the fire is lit. Then hold down F on the sleeping bag to set spawn point. So if you die, you will be able to spawn on this bed. Once you have the sleeping bag, you'll be able to venture out and do all your missions. That's me being over prepared compared to being under prepared, but you never know what could happen. You could slip and fall and die and then lose all your, all your equipment and that. So I like always just having a temporary base with a sleeping bag and just basic materials before I do any mission because you don't know what you're going to be getting yourself into as you do these missions, what animals and aliens you, you will be encountering. And I think that is it for this video. I think I've covered a lot of the tutorial stuff. I wouldn't worry t too much about unlocking everything. Obviously, I'd advise you unlock the bone stuff, bone arrows and bone spear and bone knife very important for your early levels but I wouldn't worry too much about unlocking everything like for example there's a lot of different blueprints for thatch like angled roofs and ramps and all that and I feel that they are wasted blueprint points because it's not going to be long until you'll be going onto wood and then eventually stone and then eventually metal so just I gauge your levels and just think, do I really want to spend all these points, these blueprint points on thatch and wood? I'll let you decide on that decision. I'd recommend you make sure, I know I've been going on about it, about bone, bone, there's memes about bones, I get that, but I just really encourage you to get the bone blueprints unlocked, it'll just make things a lot easier for you on your early levels. I'd, I'd recommend you get those blueprints before you set out on any of your missions. I think we'll call it there. And then on the next episode, we'll start doing some of the missions, less tutorial, more action. I just felt like I wanted to give this a proper introduction, what you could do, what you can get yourself into. I know this is more for people who have never played the game, how I've talked about this, but as we progress, it'll be less tutorial and more action. I just feel like I had a, a lot I had to get out of the way, and probably a bit more later on. 
I'm still new to this game myself. This is all the stuff I've learnt as I'm playing. If you have any hints or tips or any corrections you need to let me know about, because obviously patch changes or I'm a, a little bit ignorant and I haven't experienced stuff later on. So feel free to give us all some help and leave it in the comments. So, and that's it. Guys, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed us. Please let me know what you think of the video. Would you like more? If you will. If you do, I will make a complete series about this because I am loving Icarus. I am also streaming this on Twitch as well. So if you would like to watch me live playing this, join my Twitch channel. But don't worry, I will be putting a lot of effort in these YouTube videos also. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. Please leave a like and comment and subscribe. They are really, really helpful. It means the world to me. And that's it then. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.